Remember the arrows I put on the board this morning, the nine chemical reactions, here they are. We start up at the top with glucose. And nine chemical reactions later, we end up at the bottom with pyruvate. And like I said this morning, pyruvate has two phase. It can be converted into acetyl coenzyme A and into the Krebs cycle. And that happens if the intensity of running intensive exercise is not high enough that we can wait to use oxygen. We can rely on aerobic metabolism. So every time you go out and you just do an easy run, your athletes just go out and do an easy run, and they're using carbohydrate, this is the way it's going to go. Okay. Now, when the exercise intensity is pretty high, that we can't rely on oxygen, then we get reduced to lactate. Okay. So those are the two phases. This is a very important, like I said this morning, this is a very important fork in the road, where pyruvate is going to go. This is probably the most important fork in all of metabolism. So let's all talk about lactate as a scapegoat. And of course, we have a scapegoat up there. These are the things that people think about lactate. That lactate causes fatigue. That lactate causes muscle burning. That lactate causes muscle soreness. So let's spend at least a little bit of time talking about each one of these things and see what the truth really is. And I will say one thing, you've already seen a couple of terms here, lactic acid and lactate. Now what's the difference between the two? Well, lactic acid is an acid, lactate is not an acid. And at the pH of our body flow is the pH of our muscle. As soon as lactic acid is formed, it immediately dissociates into a lactate ion and a hydrogen ion. Okay? So to talk about lactic acid, it doesn't even make sense when we're talking about the human body. It only makes sense if we're talking about something that happens in a test tube or a petri dish. So never use the term lactic acid when you're referring to what goes on inside of us. It's always lactate. Okay? So the first thing, lactate does not, does not, does not cause fatigue. Are you sure? I'm sure. There has never been any experimental evidence proving the cause and effect relationship between lactate and fatigue. Billy Meyerhoff's observations of the 1920s falsely led to associations between oxygen insufficiency lactic acid, acidosis, and fatigue, which continue to be proliferated. While lactate increases during intense exercise, so do other metabolites. We have potassium ion increase, we have an increase in adenosine diphosphate because we have so much ATP <coughs> being broken down into ADP plus inorganic phosphate. Well, guess what? That accumulation of ADP, that accumulation of inorganic phosphate are also things that have been implicated in fatigue. So we have a lot of byproducts of metabolism that have been found to cause fatigue. Because of lactase concomitant increase with these other metabolites and the simple method of measuring its concentration in the blood, blood lactate is commonly used as a measure or an indirect measure of acidosis. It's much easier to prick somebody's finger and find the lactate concentration in that sample than it is to find the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay? Especially nowadays with some of you may have seen those uh, those transportable lactate analyzers that people can actually take to the track with them. It's very easy now to measure blood lactate. Okay. 